Welcome to Fall into Emergency Preparedness. And you have to admit, just in the nick of time. Sign in, grab one of those handouts, and, and this is good, we'll just roll. Um, who knew in the infinite wisdom of Lena Kalemba and Kathy Hayhurst, I mean, to plan a session like this for everything that's going on in the world right now is really quite incredible. So kudos to you guys. Um, as I just said, 30 minutes is going to go real, real fast. So here's the great news. I'm gonna, I've got a PowerPoint that's going to drive some ideas and hopefully maybe some questions from you. Don't be afraid to ask those questions because if we run out of time, when the big hand gets on the six, all the great information is right here in front of you. So really, you're going to be taking this back with you anyway. And I sent it to Lena so that she could actually post it in the shell as well. So if you want to refer other people to it, this is a great handout just in terms of being ready. So some of you know that I am a member of a CERT, a Community Emergency Response Team. And uh, it just happens to be in Mundelein. It's uh, with Fremont Township. And talk about timely, CERTs, Community Emergency Response Teams, kind of came to fruition as a result of 9-11, if you can believe it. Um, so that's weird that we would have just had that, yes, commemorated that yesterday, and then all the stuff that's going on in the world right now. But the, the premise is that you and I, as everyday, normal, functioning citizens, have a role to play in emergency preparedness and emergency response. And so what we're going to talk about in the next 30 minutes are really just, so these are teams that are set up to kind of help. And this is actually unit one. If you, were to, if you were to join a CERT team, unit one of your training would be on disaster preparedness, how to prepare for that. So what we're going to talk about is how you, are there disasters that you can prevent? Because that would be number one. What can we prevent? And if we can't, what could we prepare for? And then even after we've prepared for all those people in Florida and Texas right now, and Mexico, how are they responding to? So it's pre prevent, if we can, certainly prepare for, and then know how to respond. So we're just kind of setting the stage, and again, who knew how timely this was gonna be with some flooding in terms of what's going on? Um, a lot of what is a good idea to have on hand, to be honest with you, are first aid supplies. Because, and I told, I already told Kathy and Stephanie this, you know, when you guys planned this, like who knew? But um, yesterday I was running through the PowerPoint again just to kind of get myself in the game, you know, and remember what we were going to talk about today. And I'll tell you, these words and these images just kind of jump off the page now based on what we're seeing. Because one of the things that you should have heard very, very clearly in this whole Irma thing in Florida is... Are these people going to be available to you? No, no they're not. I mean, that, I, I think that's the scariest thing. We are so used to, especially in suburbia here, that when something happens, we pick up the phone and call 911 and there's somebody there within minutes where we live. That, that is what we're so used to. So I think one of the hardest things when it's a big one is to get used to that whole idea that it's not, they're not gonna be there. There's handouts right there and a sign in and just grab a seat anywhere. Um, they're not gonna be there and so you've gotta be prepared. You have to have some things in ready to go because they're not gonna be able to do that. So here's what we're gonna talk about. The different roles and responsibilities that different people play in community preparedness. What are some hazards that are specific to us? This is a national training, so they're gonna talk about earthquakes and stuff, and while that could happen here, um, we don't typically worry about earthquakes and hurricanes here. Um, and then what are some personal things that you can be doing personally to take action right now to make sure that you're prepared? What does the government do? The government has responsibility to make sure that there are emergency plans in place. They do that. To be honest with you, Crystal Lake Police has made absolutely sure that MCC has an emergency preparedness plan. Did you know that? It has to be on file with them. It has to be something that's looked at regularly and that is updated. We have to have that. The government mandates that that happens. We have to ensure that um, the government is also going to make sure that emergency responders have adequate skills and resources. That's great. That's our tax dollars at work, okay? And then they'll provide services to protect and assist us. That's what the government does. 
Community leaders have that responsibility to participate in preparedness. They've got local collaborative planning councils. They, they are definitely involved in this. They identify appropriate resources and they ensure that facility staff and customers are prepared. Here's us, we are the public, okay? So what's our role in this? We need to know, we need to make absolutely sure that we understand how we would be alerted, warned, in an emergency situation and, and know um, how we would evacuate if we were called on to do that. One of our responsibilities, you guys, is to take training. It's very cool that you're here. This is some great information to make yourself familiar with, but there are a number of different training opportunities that are available to you. First aid and CPR training would be terrific because if it was the big one, like I just said, EMS is not gonna be able to show up at your door the way we are accustomed to. We need to practice our skills and our personal plans. We need to network, be willing to help others. Big thing in CERT um, that we talk about is that our number, who's the number one person we take care of? It's me, yeah, ourselves. So it's, it's me, my family, and my neighbors. That, that's kind of, it, it, for us as individuals, that's who we're thinking about. It's us first, safety, it's us first, then our family, and then our, um, communi our community around, our neighborhood. And here at work, it would be us first, but then it's the people on your work team that you would be looking out for as well. We give feedback to the community, especially if something isn't working. This is key in terms of what we do. That reporting suspicious activities, that's, I mean, we're all about that right now here. We, we have that behavioral intervention team, right? We have that see something, say something campaign. And that should carry on over into your real life as well as your work life. If you're seeing something in your community that just doesn't seem right, there's a car that's been parked out on my street that, I mean, with a, a play, a, you know, I don't, that car's not usually there. You pick up the phone and you let the police know. You notice um, you're just out, you know, for a walk and you notice a bunch of people just kind of walking around your local school and acting just kind of weird, taking pictures of some, you know, it's just like when you look at something and you say, ooh, that seems kind of weird, the whole idea is you have to report that. And you know what, if the, if the police look into it and it's nothing, if MCC police look into it and it's nothing, oh well, they don't care. They'd rather have you say it up front. If your local police look into it and say it was nothing, oh well. But if it is something, you've helped to prevent something from happening potentially. We can always volunteer. Okay, different kinds of disasters. Name some natural disasters. This should be really easy. Tornado. Tornado. Hurricane. Hurricane. Earthquake. Earthquake. Flooding. Flooding. We've experienced, I mean, this is like uh, talk about the, o over the summer, okay? Wild it's wildfires. 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 Mm hmm. Although one could, you know, wildfires could be in that. Because, um, you know, when we talk about technological, what are some technological disasters that could happen? Nuclear. Nuclear. Power grid, which we know is outdated. I mean, that's incredible, but if somebody were to take that down. Intentional, we have a tendency to think of terrorist attacks, perhaps. And in some ways, probably these two, I mean, if you think about it, a natural disaster really isn't preventable. That it's going to happen. We can prevent and maybe mitigate, kind of reduce some of the impact from it, but we can't stop it from happening. Whereas the technology, technological and the intentional, perhaps we could stop it. Wildfires might fall under that intentional, or um, maybe it's more careless than intentional. But um. so, how do you define a disaster? They're unexpected. We did, I mean, if we knew they were coming, you know what I mean? But we don't always know they're coming. So usually they're unexpected. Usually, if it's a big one, emergency personnel are overwhelmed and um, lives, health, and the environment are endangered. And here's the really, really good news. It appears that with all the um, proactive communication and heating that happened with Irma, it appears that not a lot of lives and um, not a lot of infrastructure was damaged. What's, we're without power with tons of water down there. And that, those are huge issues, but they were able to mitigate some stuff. 
So what are the most common disasters that are going to happen here in Crystal Lake, Illinois? Tornadoes. Tornadoes. Floods. Mm-hmm. Snowstorms. Blizzards. Mm-hmm. Fires actually would, would fall under that. Unfortunately, with everything, house explosions these days, what, the, what in the world is going on with that? Um, but those are happening all over as well. Power outages. Power outages. Mm-hmm. It's just funny, there, we're going to talk about putting together an emergency supply kit. I ju it just takes me back. Prior to being at MCC, I was at the Red Cross for uh, 19 years and did community education. I remember so clearly being at Highland Park High School and um, talking to these fairly wealthy um, individuals from the North Shore. And I was talking to them about um, having an emergency supply kit in their house and how important that would be, that they could go without power. And they were just bored to tears. And here I thought I had this wonderful presentation. They were like, blah, 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 blah. Within like the next week, I didn't do anything, I swear. Um, Highland Park was like in a power outage for three days straight. That was almost like unexplicable. It wasn't tied to a storm or anything. I can't even remember what caused it. But I thought, oh, those kids, I bet they wish now they had been paying attention and had all those things in their home. But um, So power outages, you know, if, if those go on for a couple of days, that, that's an issue to deal with. That really is an issue to deal with. It depends upon, too, what time of year they happen. It's pretty uncomfortable in midsummer without air conditioning. Um, it's really uncomfortable in midwinter without, without any kind of heating um, in the house. So that's it. Okay, so some, you, you would be thinking about what would be recent or historical that happened in this area. Like I say, we don't typically have to worry about hurricanes or earthquakes. Um, earthquakes, I suppose, could happen. Um, and then consider what might possibly happen if services were disrupted. If there's damage to infrastructure, police and firefighters and EMS, boy, they are they're only going to the absolute most important things at that point in time. Um, and we always think that. We, and we even think that when they show up on the scene, they're going to be able to help us, and they might run right past us because they're going on to something that is even more important than what we're dealing with. Lower priority needs are met in other ways, and in a lot of instances, you guys, that's you and I helping neighbors, helping community, helping um, churches, helping whatever it might be, cert teams out there, whatever it is. Sometimes you don't have an opportunity to select what structure you're going to be in when a disaster occurs. A lot of those homes that are down in Florida now were built with hurricanes in mind. A lot of the, um, particularly schools and universities down there, were built to withstand that kind of wind, that kind of flooding. I mean, they built that with that in mind. Um, a lot of times you don't have the choice in terms of where you're going to be when it happens. The types of damage are going to vary by structure. And there's a big difference between a single family home and a multiple unit dwelling, particularly in case of fire. I mean, you know, at least we're if we're in our own home, we're going to be protected from a neighborhood fire, whereas if we're in an apartment building or a town home, there's a much more of a tendency for that to spread. We're hearing a lot about gas line ruptures these days. There can be damage from falling books, dishes, and other cabinet contents, and that's usually earthquake. But I would point out to you that as of late, um, it's not a bad idea to secure furniture because of just um, furniture falling over on people, as silly as that sounds. Mostly young, young kids that are pulling things over onto themselves. So if you've got bookshelves or an entertainment center that is kind of wobbly or kind of, it'd be, you, you really do want to have that secured to the wall. Certainly if there was an earthquake, but also so, so someone doesn't pull it over on themselves. Electric shock or injury, um, make sure that you, um, any of your office equipment here or your appliances that every once in a while you're just kind of checking cords. Make sure that cords are not running underneath um, carpeting or underneath rugs. We have a tendency to put a rug over it because it's unsightly and also then it's not a trip hazard. But again, you're, you're setting up a fire hazard for yourself. Okay? So if we talk about the home and workplace. Oh, and you can't really see this. It's a great emergency supply kit. We'll go over that in just a little bit. But you should be thinking, 
definitely at home tonight. Like, what are some things? We're going to talk about stuff that I bet you're going to say, oh, yes, I've heard this before. But how many of you have an emergency supply kit in your basement or by the front door that's ready to go? You got one? My husband's. OK, good. So he's really in. It, this really is key to do this. Um, if you take a look, let's just do it. Because this is probably one of the most important things. It's on page three in here. It's the one that has the red um, down the side. Depending upon the time of year, you need to think about warmth. So you would want some kind of warm clothing in place um, that people could slip into. Again, this should be, in an ideal situation, you'd have some kind of a Rubbermaid container or um, I'm embarrassed to tell you, I've got one of those um, buckets from Menards, you know, I think it's Home Depot actually, and I'm, it's terrible. In it, it has a roll of toilet paper and a roll of duct tape. I mean, it's a start, but I mean, I really, I, there's so much more that should be in there. I do have my cert backpack and that is loaded with stuff. And I've got a ton of um, uh, canned food downstairs. Um, and I do have a can opener, because I've got camping equipment down there, so I've got a can opener. Because for a while we realized we've got all this canned food down there, but if I don't have a can opener, it's not really going to help me. And I do have, I do have um, uh, gallons of water. It, back in the day when you could get like good solid um, plastic gallon jugs that your um, milk came in, really good solid ones. And I do, I, I'm embarrassed to say this, I do, um, Refill those every year, and I put and I write the date with a sharpie on there, so I know that they're good for within a year. So there is some water down there. There's definitely some canned goods, and I've got my bucket in case I needed it as a toilet with my toilet paper in. It. All right. Anyway, so warm clothes might be a, a consideration. Extra clothes. Then, what are your unique needs as a family? Should you keep an extra supply of some kind of medication down there? Because uh, here I'm thinking in most terms for us. Okay, the thing that really we're probably going to have to deal with just like that is going to be a tornado. And so we're going to be down in the basement. We're not going to be able to come upstairs in our homes to get to things. We're just going to have to stay there. And so think about what kinds of stuff you would want down there. That idea of a um, food, the battery powered, powered radio with some extra batteries, the crank ones now, a flashlight with extra batteries, definitely a first aid kit. Why a whistle? It's a lot, that, that makes a lot bigger, louder noise for a lot less effort on your part. After a while, yelling for help just, I mean, they can hear a whistle a lot, for, it, it's a lot louder and it's a lot less effort on your part, so that whistle really is important. Dust mask wouldn't be a bad idea. Moist towelettes, that would be terrific. I think about a time when I went on a, um, caving trip years ago we came up out of the cave we were just i mean there was i mean there's no showers or anything you're just going to change into clothes and i remember as we got onto the bus this guy had um a package of the baby wipes the bigger it was like heaven i mean just to have that one wipe to be able to wipe my face and my arms and my hands you know so that would be a great thing to have down there because if water shut off at least you're going to be able to just kind of clean up Wrench or pliers if you're going to have to turn off utilities down there. A can opener if that food is in cans. Plastic sheeting and duct tape in case we ever had to shelter in place. And then if you've got uh, young people, um, if you've got infants and kids, you'd want games down there. You'd want extra supplies down there for them. Garbage bags could be used for a number of different things. Okay, so be thinking about it at home tonight. Honestly, you got the only way you can do this, you guys, is to take this list, come up with a container, and start putting stuff in it. Okay, you can buy these. Yes, you can go out and buy them, but I'm telling you, you probably have most of this stuff. If you just had a container, a watertight container that you could just put throw stuff into, a lot cheaper. All right. We should be thinking about it at work too, and that's more just in terms of thinking about who's on our work team, how would we evacuate, who might need help evacuating. Those are the sorts of things that we want to think about at work. So what, how would we be alerted for things here at MCC? How would we know if there's a fire? Pardon? No. 
Yeah, yeah that, that, by that time, it's literally going to be, that's the only alarm that goes on in the building, okay? So you're going to hear an alarm in the building, and this white strobe light is going to be flashing. And that's how you know that there's a fire. And what do we do? We get out, and we get everybody to go out with us. So we have to understand that warning. The other thing that's most likely to happen here would be a tornado. And how are we going to be notified of that at MCC? OK. It would be over the public address system. It's an announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, the Crystal Lake area is now under a tornado warning. Please take cover. And again, we're all going to move to a place that is away from outside windows, down perhaps as low as we can go, not wide, expansive ceilings. OK, that's where we're going to go. When would we ever be called to evacuate? Chemical spill, we could be called to evacuate. Mm -hmm. Bomb threat. Bomb threat, we could be called to evacuate. So we'd have to know what those routes are. And again, you know, we always talk about um, in any situation, it, in your neighborhood and here at work, you should be, I mean, like, what if Route 14 is shut down? Would you, could you get yourself out the back entrance and get yourself around anything that would, you know, because for whatever reason, sometimes routes at your home or routes here could be totally blocked off. So you should be thinking about how would I do that? I live in Mundelein, and so my biggest concern for getting home really is getting over that Fox River. I only have so many options to get over the Fox River to get myself out of here. Um, Pardon me? Is that why you keep a jetpack? Yes, because I just never know when I might have to just lift off. Yeah. I do have a little emergency supply kit in my car. Now that you remind me, it's in a little that has a whistle. OK, so maybe I'm not so bad. Uh, anyway, um, specific needs for yourself and for people you know. So think about who's in your family in terms of what you would be providing for them. So what do we do? We assess the situation. Then we have to make, talk about what just happened down there. We have to make a decision. Are we staying or are we going? Okay, and that's exactly what they had to do. Um, in a tornado situation, we are staying. We are sheltering in place. We heard that a lot, okay? But that's exactly, that's that decision that we're going to shelter in place. In a fire situation, we are going. We are getting out of the house. We are not staying there. All right, and this is, you've heard this over and over again, particularly with 9-11, it's very critical that that decision is made quickly and that you act upon it. And in 9-11, um, how many stories did we hear where seconds counted, where it was like I was going to run down that stairway or I, I, was, gonna, I was waiting because Laura, I was like, Laura, come on, come on, come on. And, you know, some of that is you got to just make that decision and you've got to go. It makes all the difference in the world. It, with this hurricane, that made all the difference in the world in terms of they hit a point where it was like, you have no, no choice now, now you're staying. Um, so again, you got to think and you have to act on it quickly. They talk, they, they, um, in the CERT training, they talk a lot about clean air and protecting breathing passages. It's kind of weird. Uh, so certainly in, if any kind of dust is involved, I would definitely do that with one of those masks, the PPE, um, personal protective equipment. Um, they talk a lot in CERT about having the plastic and the duct tape so that you could, like, in a um, situation where there was some kind of a chemical th threat, you could um, pick out room in your home and seal it off with duct tape and with plastic. Boy, I mean, yes, definitely you could do that, I suppose. I just, I, I don't, at that point, I'm not real sure. Anyway, that's getting us way into an, a whole other discussion of wh how long would that take for that to dissipate, and when you get out, who's going to be out there that you're going to be dealing with. And anyway, you've got that. Um, you want to protect yourself from debris and that whistle to be able to signal if you're trapped under something, get rid of any contaminants that you could and to the best of your ability, still be able to have um, hygiene, good hygiene habits. So if you're sheltering in place, sealing a room, you identify that room, you're going to stay there for several hours, you've got all your supplies in place. A shelter for an extended stay is more what we're probably up against with a blizzard or a, um, uh, a tornado situation that has some, some um, collapsing. So where we're going to stay there for, I, I can't, just can't, for us it would be really hard to stay for several days. Mm -hmm. They did that though. It's so weird to think for, with that hurricane, how long they had to wait for it to come after they were in place. 
And then if you're going to go to a mass care or community shelter, most of the time they've got the supplies there. But you saw people taking along, obviously, personal items with them. You want your own clothing. You're, you certainly want to make sure that you've got medications that are quick and easy to grab at that point in time. When you develop a disaster plan, and this could be at work as well as at home, okay, one of the big things is when I get out, where am I going to find any, everybody? So if I want to check in to, to make sure that Peter got out and Kathy got out and Stephanie got out and Ray got out, where is it that we're going to meet so that we could be able to say that? Certainly want to do that with your family. How many of you have an out-of-state check-in contact with your family? Okay, um, you should have someone, an aunt, an uncle, an, you know, an old friend or whatever it is, they're in a totally different state so that if something were to happen here, and particularly with cell phone lines and landlines, if those were all shut down or overwhelmed, that you could get in touch with them to say, I am at the college, but I'm fine, and I'm just going to stay here. It just doesn't make any sense for me to try to go anywhere. I, the place where I am is safe. When, when, da, 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 when my dad calls in, when my mom calls in, would you please let them know? And they say, oh, we've already heard from your mom and dad. They're fine, too. They're going to stay exactly where they're at. You get it? So you really need to have that, and you need to make sure that, that your whole family knows who they are. Every once in a while, we quiz our family to make sure that everybody knows who we're calling and, you know, and what instance to say to make sure that you check in. Then that whole idea, am I going to stay? Am I going to shelter in place? Am I going to evacuate? Do I have routes of escape? And again, you know, we talk about this a lot with active shooter stuff now, too. Um, literally, as you're sitting in a classroom, as you're sitting in a movie theater, as you're sitting in your church, as you're sitting, you know, wherever you are, have you thought about, if I hear something, or, you know, how am I going to get out? If I smell smoke, see flame, that thing is going off, but the, the door that I always go in and out is, is no longer available to me, where else am I going to go? That's, that's one of the most common mistakes that people make, you guys, in an emergency situation. They are always going back to the door where they came in. So I'm at Walmart, I'm at Jewel, I'm at wherever it is, and something starts to happen in there. Something's going down, whether it's an active shooter, it's a fire. All I, I never even think about the fact that there are doors all the way around. There's loading docks in the back of those stores. There's different routes. I need to be thinking and not necessarily all, everybody trying to run out the door that we came in. Um, so know your different routes um, and make sure that you're practicing your plan from time to time. Some people are going to need more help. Know who those people are. Know who's mobility impaired for whatever reasons and make sure that you're running drills. Mitigation is to reduce or lessen the impact of the disasters. And make sure that you've got enough homeowners um, coverage on your, on your stuff. But here's some things that you could do. You should anchor heavy furniture. Make sure that appliances and office equipment are secured and make sure that you've checked the, um, the uh, cords on those. We don't need to worry about hurricane storm shutters, but some people are very grateful that they have those today. Um, make sure that our cabinet doors are childproof if we need to do that. Do you know for a fact, could you go home tonight and turn off your gas, your water, and your electricity? You know you could do it. Do you know it? I mean, you, we really should know that, you guys. Um, I can turn off, okay, so I turn off electricity, which is usually throwing that throwing a switch to, to, to shut it off, if you can picture that in your box, okay? And then how do I put it back on? Turn off all the little ones. No, don't just throw it back on. That's a great surge. Turn off all the little ones then, put it back on, and then turn those on one at a time, okay? What about the gas? I turn that off. Do you know what? You need to go home and see where, what that looks like, okay? If I turn off the gas, who turns it back on? Only the gas company. Once I turn the gas off, I don't turn it back on. I, if I've turned it off for whatever reason, if I've been told to, or if I smelled something and thought I should, that's now I just wait for them to come. Water is probably the easiest. That one we can usually just do by hand. Lefty, loosey, righty, tidy, okay? Um, all right, make sure we don't really worry about bolting houses to foundations. Again, this is national, and we don't really worry about... Um, getting our mobile homes down to their slabs, what they really should be. 
Raising utilities would be a good idea for us. Washers, dryers, freezers that are in the basement might be a good idea just to get them a couple of inches off the ground. It could make all the difference in the world. I'm running out of time here, you guys. Um, fortify your home, get involved, different things that you can do. I can't tell you enough that if you were just to take this and read through it, and especially use page three as a checklist, and at the very, very back, it's got some great information of um, little cards that you could fill out with a family communication plan. You could actually cut those out and make sure that, you know, make copies of this, have people in your family carrying that in their wallets so that at any time, or should something happen to that family member, your emergency contact information is in there for them to be able to notify you. Protective equipment that certainly, uh, well, cert members wear that, but um, uh, it wouldn't be a big, bad idea to have some kind of eye protection, the dust mask, and some gloves in your kit downstairs. I think that's it. Oh, 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 different things that we do at CERT. Who cares about that? So now, you should be able to identify roles and responsibilities for community preparedness, what the government does, what agencies do, but mostly we're talking about what you can do, all right? And then you should know some different hazards that affect this community. And tonight, you got to take this book home and do some stuff or none of this counted. Do you know what I mean? Because you can know all of this, but if you don't take this home and do some stuff, it doesn't work. If you have any questions, you know you got you know, you know where to find me. Okay, thank you all. Thank you. The end. <laughs>